Roguelide Solo here again. Going to do a quick lunchtime video. And this is, well, I don't know if it's the much anticipated uh, video, but it's uh, at least, I think, the somewhat anticipated video, which will be the review of the Peter Stokeby Bullseye Twist Flake in two different versions. One is a stoved version and if you look back uh, a couple of weeks ago I did a video on how to stove tobacco really good for Virginia's Virginia Periques um, I won't get into a lot of the details here in this video but uh, if you'd like to I'll put the link down in the uh, cellar with the instructions on how to do this um, I'm also going to review the non-stoved version, just so that you can get a good idea of the side-by-side -side comparisons and how that tobacco changes as the stoving process uh, takes place. So, also, just an FYI, the restoration process for the giveaway is underway. So if you haven't already voted on that one, go to the video down in the cellar and click on that and make sure that you provide your vote on which one you want to see restored. I'm actually going to show all three. Um, I thought I'd do that just because I don't know for certain which one is going to be given away and I want to make sure that whoever receives the pipe gets to see the entire restoration process or the bulk of it anyway. So a little housekeeping up front. I am smoking my Savinelli Trevi 320. Um, much like the one that uh, Mel, the garbage man Harris, is going to be giving away in his holiday gaw. I love this pipe. Although I will agree with him, it is pretty big, it's not a clincher. Uh, but this is also the same pipe that I've used to do the reviews. So I've been smoking several bowls of the stoved and non-stoved versions and I've used this pipe so I thought it fitting uh, to record this video with the same pipe that I did the restoration and in this pipe just kidding not gonna tell you not until the end of this video because in this pipe is the version of Peter Stoke could be bullseye twist flake that I prefer better than the other stoved or non-stove who's the winner stay tuned to find out so because I want to be as thorough as I can, I've got my notes. And I've got four pages of notes. I wanted to make sure that I hit all of the highlights, all the lowlights, etc. And so I'm going to do a little bit of reading as, as we go here. I'm also going to put some assistive aids up here, just so that you can see as I kind of go through the tasting notes, you can see the notes as well. Okay, so first off, um, I wanted to have kind of a fair comparison between the two tobaccos. So I treated them pretty close to the same uh, on both of them, as close as I could. So the only exception to that is the stoving process. Again, check out the video. Um, prior to smoking, I rubbed out eight discs of each one of the tobaccos and I let them dry overnight. Um, the reason I did that is because I find that Peter Stokeby, even in bulk, which is how I typically buy it, is a little on the moist side and it has a tendency to bite me. Um, so I tend to like to smoke Peter Stokeby Virginia's a little on the drier side. So I rubbed out eight discs. Put, uh, put those eight discs inside of a jar, let them rest overnight. Um, then, right prior to smoking each time, got a frog in my throat. Not Frog Martin, never tried it. Um, so prior to each smoke, I also let them air dry for 20 to 30 minutes. Again, I wanted to make sure that they're on the dry side. I did the same with this bowl. I wanted to make sure that the review was as comparative as possible between the two. So I tried to treat them exactly the same. So I had multiple settings uh, where I smoked back-to-back -back bowls of uh, each one of the tobaccos. And each time I took notes, I did... Sometimes I 
Like one time I'll do the, the stoved version first, and then I followed that up immediately with the second bowl, which was the non-stoved version, and then I flipped them the next time I sat and did the same thing. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to make sure that palate fatigue um, through the two bowls wasn't an issue. So I wanted to make sure that my taste buds were fresh uh, on both tobaccos, so I alternated them as I sat down and, and tried each one. So, the reviews. I'm going to start with a non-stoved version. And I'll kind of break these down in the, in the same format. I'll cover the aroma out of the, the jar in this case. I'll cover the uh, char light, the first half of the bowl, and the second half of the bowl. And I'm doing it that way because I find that this particular tobacco does change as you go through the bowl. Before we get into the actual review notes though, before we get into the review notes, I do want to uh, cover the uh, pictures because I, th I think it's fairly amazing the differences between the two. Um, Law and Smoke recently did a video on some aged bullseye flake that he received from a viewer. And as he showed that, it looked very similar to what the stoved tobacco looks like. So up here are a couple of pictures that I'll show you that kind of outline the differences between the two. Obviously the lighter version is the non-stoved version and the darker version is the stoved version. So. Um, it makes quite a bit of difference in terms of appearance, and I'll tell you it makes quite a bit of difference in terms of aroma, flavor, and all of that good stuff as well. So let's start with the non-stoved version. The non-stoved version, right out of the, the jar uh, in this case, um, the aroma had a lot of fresh hay. Um, you've heard, I'm sure, many times that Virginias tend to take on either hay or kind of a sweet fruit flavor or aroma. Oh, and flavor for that matter. Um, the non-stove version was very hay-like. There was a, a, a pretty good presence of wet grass in the aroma. There was a slight sweetness, but <clears throat> I really had to look for the sweetness. And I don't know whether that comes from the Cavendish uh, that's part of the twist or if it was coming from the Virginia. I presume because there's such a strong hay note to this tobacco that it was likely coming from the Cavendish and maybe a little bit the Virginia's. So on the char light, on the char light, there's an initial um, kind of a heavy perique. Uh, I won't call it burn, but we'll call it spice. Um, I find the non-stoved version kind of in general a little harsh. And again, that's why I go through the whole drying process with this particular tobacco. Um, it bites me. I don't know if that's the Cavendish or just the Virginia. Um, I don't typically get bit by other Virginias, but this one um, starts off on the initial light with a very heavy, kind of, I'm gonna call it the Perique. Um, <clears throat> it's not if you watched a lot of my videos, you know that I love uh, Bayou Morning. It's not the same spice as what you find in Bayou Morning, so I presume it might be, to some degree, the Virginia's in it as well. Um, it is a little bit on the harsh side uh, on the initial light. The first half of the bowl is uh, that the hay is uh, continues in the in the first half of the bowl. It's very present, very forward. I would say that that's definitely the uh, the Virginias. It reminds me of, um, in my tobacco lineage comes from predominantly cigars, and this tobacco reminds me a lot of a, a Connecticut wrapped cigar. Um, it has uh, that that real strong hay presence, but it also kind of it kind of reminds me of. Uh, spring in Kansas where I grew up where you know you, you go through uh, a lot of the country roads and you know farmers are cutting the hay and you get you get a lot of that that same flavor um, in the tobacco there is an occasional sweet spot 
in the first half of the bowl, and I presume that comes from the Cavendish. It's not real strong, but it's just kind of sweet notes that hit you on occasion. And remember, I did rub those out, so that little bitty piece of uh, Cavendish in this tobacco gets spread out fairly well, and I find it's a little hard to, to get it dispersed within the rub. Um, but I, I notice that you do, you do kind of um, see the presence of that Cavendish on occasion. It's not consistent. It's not all the way through the bowl. It's just like little sweet spots for me. Um, the Perique in the first half of the bowl continues to have that kind of uh, spicy, and in this case, I'm going to say it's almost a burnt flavor. Um, it's not unpleasant. Um, in my opinion, it's just, uh, it's just, it reminds me of kind of burnt toast. I actually like burnt toast. Um, I like burnt foods in general. Um, although I like my steak medium rare, which is how you should eat it. Um, second half of the bowl on the non-stove version. Presents in a very kind of an interesting way. There's almost a buttery texture and the only thing that I can mentally compare that butter texture to is if you're a wine drinker I'm not a huge wine drinker but when I do drink wine I like Chardonnays I like the darker wines because they give that kind of a buttery mouthfeel to it and this one does kind of the same thing this tobacco does kind of the same thing in terms of it kind of coats your tongue and gives you that little bit of a, a buttery texture uh, on your tongue um, I actually find that very pleasurable, which is one of the reasons that I like this tobacco, despite it being a little on the harsh side for me. Um, the second half doesn't have as much bite as the first half. Um, it tends to mellow out a little bit um, as the bowl goes down, especially as it gets towards the end of the bowl. And uh, the flavors seem to kind of meld together. This is why I like the Bullseye Twist Flake. Um, I'm not too fond of the first half. I'm not too fond of the flavors or how the Perique present or Perique Perique um, Perique presents itself. But I am fond of the second half of this bowl and the flavors that kind of mold together. That burnt flavor is still present, but uh, it it works really well with this tobacco. Um, I also should note that. That same kind of a burnt flavor, I get that from a lot of Peter Stokeby uh, Virginias, um, the Twist Flake and and uh, the Navy Flake. So I get that same kind of a Virginia burnt flavor from those. Um, I actually like it. Um, it's not one of my favorites. I do tend to like a little bit on the sweeter side, uh, the fruit side of uh, Virginias, but uh, it makes for a nice uh, change of pace uh, on occasion. Right at the very end of the bowl, I mentioned that things kind of meld together, but also this uh, kind of a, a raisin, um, and really lucky if you stick your, stuck your nose in a, uh, in a box of raisins, you get a very strong raisin uh, sense out of this one. So it does finish on the darker side for me. Um, conclusion for the non-stoked version, um, in general, it's a little on the harsher side, which is why I don't go to it every day. Um, it's somewhat bitter at times, and that may have to do with the pH, my body pH. Um, I notice that uh, I, my mouthfeel kind of gets to the point where almost as if you're eating like the salt vinegar potato chips, if you eat a whole bunch of those, you get that almost like a, um, a weird texture on the inside of your mouth, and I get that from, from this tobacco. Um, but I do like the, the grassy and the hay um, notes that I get from this tobacco. So conclusion, it's a good smoke. I keep buying it, so it must be all right. But now we're going to move to the stove version. So as you saw in the pictures, the stove version's a lot darker. Um, the aroma out of the jar, um, all I can say is, wow, it is a huge difference. Um, it's it's not even like the same same tobacco. There's a, a lot of stewed fruits, and I hate using that term because I think I think it's used a lot. But um, as I was thinking through, kind of you know what mentally I could connect to this aroma. Um, when I was a kid, my mom and dad used to always make breaded tomatoes, stewed breaded tomatoes, 
and I could never get over the texture of those things, and I absolutely hated them for that reason. But the smell of stewed tomatoes presents in kind of a, almost like a stewed fruit, what I think of when I think stewed fruit way. Um, really sweet, that's probably from the bread that's in the tomatoes, but a really sweet, really deep, dark kind of kind of aroma, and I get that same aroma in uh, the, the uh, stove version of Bullseye Twist Flake. The wet grass is still there, but it's a lot more kind of a secondary component. Um, I think the predominant component in the aroma is the sweetness. Um, the hay is almost all but gone. Y you really would have to look for it to, to, to find it. So the differences between the aroma between the stoved and the non-stoved version are, to me, almost night and day. Char light. On the initial light, you get just a burst of sweetness. There's very little sign of the perique. Um, as I noted in the, the non-stoved version, you get an initial harshness, and that is absolutely gone in the stoved version. Um, first half of the bowl, the sweetness continues all the way through the first half of the bowl. Um, I don't think that's at all the Cavendish sweetness. I think that's the Virginia sweetness. It reminds me very much of a lot of the, the fruit-sided um, Virginias, um, which I actually prefer over the hay. Um, and, I, and I think, actually, you know, when I was trying to think of kind of com comparing tobaccos, I recently tried Amphora Virginia Blend for the first time. That tobacco is definitely cased. Um, and this reminds me a lot of that kind of a sweet, rich sweetness that comes out of the Amphora um, casing. Um, although this one hasn't been cased in any way, as far as I could detect. Um, the darker fruits are very present in the first half. They present themselves in a little bit different way than the dark fruit does at the end of the non-stoved version. Um, there's a lot more molasses, kind of the dark uh, brown sugar flavors. I presume that is a direct result of the, uh, of the stoving process because, as I mentioned in my stoving video, there is uh, what's called a Maillard reaction, which is where those sugars actually caramelize. Um, so it makes total sense that the stove version would present in a little bit uh, sweeter, brown sugarish kind of way. Um, <clears throat> the first half of this bowl reminds me a lot more of Escudo. And as I s started kind of preparing mentally for the review, I told myself I would not compare Bullseye Twist Flake to Scudo. I know it's compared a lot. I don't understand why. I think they're night and day, day different tobaccos. The only real comparison, I think, is the presentation in the twist form. Um, I think they're totally different tobaccos, in my opinion. But the stoved version does kind of a present in a you know, in a way that's closer or more similar to uh, Escudo in this case. Again, my opinion, my palate. Um, Virginias are much more forward in the stoved version than they are in the non-stoved version. In other words, I get a lot less of the Perique. Um, <coughs> in the edges that are present, um, that harshness, the kind of the bitterness that I taste in the non-stoved, are almost all but gone in the stoved version. Um, second half of the bowl, which happens to be, I think, where I'm at on this bowl. Um, question is, is which one am I smoking? Um, the burn and the spice, um, n although not as forward as in the non-stoved version, kind of represents itself. Um, it gets closer to what I would think is more of a vapor-like tobacco. Um, first half is more almost like a straight Virginia. Second half presents itself a little bit more in, in, the, in the vapor side of things. So the, the spice notes come in, although they're not as strong, um, but they do definitely come in into the second half of the bowl. Um, the dark fruits, just like they condensed in the non-stove, they seem to be doing the same thing in the in the stoved version.
second half there's a you get a little bit of the nose tingle that you get from uh, a normal vapor and i presume again that's from the um, perique um, I, I actually thought it would be interesting to figure out kind of what the differences are between the perique or, because of the stoving uh, process and it seems like it's kind of ratcheted it down a little bit now i like bayou morning so i like a lot of perique i'd love to find a way to maybe maybe even back sweeten this with some uh you know blending perique to see if i could get a little bit more of that perique flavor but also uh, retain that virginia forward uh, aspect of the stove version um much more of a rich smoke. I mean, um, this one presents itself as um, kind of like I said earlier, the darker Chardonnay. It still has the buttery texture, but it presents itself as those um, molasses, the dark fruit, the um, almost figs. It reminds me, my grandma used to give me figs when I was a kid. Um, and this definitely reminds me, it kind of takes me back mentally into, um, you know, when I was a kid and, and uh, We'd come in playing from the playground and she would give us you know, fig newtons the old school fig newtons as a uh, as a treat as an afternoon snack um and the sweetness on this thing just continues all the way through the sweetness itself doesn't seem to increase um throughout the second of the bowl but it does definitely uh, continue almost kind of the same level all the way down um so, you know, conclusion on the stove, uh, I like it. it. It's really good. It's well worth the process. It's worth the two-week waiting period um, for waiting for this stuff to uh, to get ready to smoke after you stove it. Again, that process. Check it out. Um, it's real easy. So, you've heard the review of the non-stove. You've heard the review of the stove. So which one do I like better? What's in the bowl? The winner is the stoved version, for sure. I mean, this stuff is amazing. Um, on its own accord as a non-stoved version, I think I'd probably continue to buy it. Um, and I think it'll probably get better with age. But when you stove this stuff, I gotta tell you, it is amazing uh, in my opinion it's actually one of my favorite tobaccos recently I bought eight ounces of the non stove so I could do this comparison <coughs> between the two and I gotta tell you I'm seriously considering um, stoving all eight ounces of that um, just because that's how much I like it so what's what's up next um, Next in the Peter Stokeby Bullseye Twist Flake experiment, um, uh, if you've watched a few of my videos, you know I like the, kind of the experimentation process. Um, I think I'm going to do two new experiments. One is I'm going to do a side-by-side -side aging of the stoved and non-stoved. Um, <coughs> not going to be able to do that video for a year or two, um, but I'm real interested to see how the stoved version ages. Will it continue to mature? Will it continue to get sweeter? Will those um, those sugars in the tobacco continue to ferment in the same way that the non-stoved version will, or will they will they kind of come together in terms of uh, you know that sweetness and that aged sensation? Um, the stoving process to me um, kind of seems like an instant age especially based on what Low and Smoke showed and the pictures that I showed you. So that's one experiment I want to try. The other one is I want to do um, kind of a four tobacco side by side, which is a, a non-aged stoved, an aged stoved, an aged non-stoved, and an aged stoved. That's a mouthful. Um, but I really kind of want to play with this tobacco and kind of keep seeing what it does over time. Uh, and I'm kind of excited to, to give it a shot. In the meantime, I've got some more stoving to do. Um, I've also got some pipe restorations to finish, and I've got more work to do um, today, so uh, I think I'm going to get back to it. So let me know down in the comments uh, what you think of the review. Again, 
you know, this is my real kind of real first review of tobacco. Um, I struggle sometimes with looking for the words and looking for the connections, the mental connections around flavors that I taste and how to articulate those. Um, I would used to do the same thing on beers. Um, it's, it's hard to connect flavors, aromas to words. Um, so let me know what you think. Let me know if you want to see more reviews. Um, I actually had quite a bit of fun doing this uh, experiment. Um, and I got to buy more tobacco, so that never sucks. Um, so uh, keep an eye out for the restoration videos. Again, if you haven't voted on which one you want the chance to win, either the um, Chippendale Poker, the uh, Ewan Reese um, author style, or the Bertram Bulldog. So um, take a look at that video down below. Go put in your vote if you haven't already. And hopefully that video will be coming out soon. It's going to take uh, a little bit of production post um, video, but I'm looking forward to getting that one out to you guys so that you can see that restoration process, provide me with some more pointers so I can continue to get better and learn from all of you. And uh, that's about all I got for this afternoon. So once again, I am Road Glide Soli. I'm going to change it up a little bit. I am going to catch you next time, but also want to say for all of you writers, keep the rubber side down.